So this is a prayer or the prayer attributed to St. Francis. And it's hanging in my office, like the first thing that you'd see when you'd walk in. Um, and it's, I love this prayer because it reminds, it's so, it just cuts through everything and says, this is what I'm ultimately called to, is to be an instrument of God's peace. What I love the most about the United Methodist Church is our theology. I love that our theology is healing. I love that our theology helps bridge a gap. And I love that it helps people in some way encounter God in a way that they never expected. And they develop a newer understanding. What I love about serving at Treach is everybody's willingness and excitement to serve. Um, people are really passionate about serving and living their faith out in the world. And they're always looking for more opportunities. I'm often surprised by the people who find themselves uh, in the doors of the church. We actually started a, a ministry called A Different Door because of some of the interactions that I was having and a couple of my colleagues were having where uh, we would meet somebody and we would meet them in like a not traditional way. They didn't come through the doors of the church. Uh, they didn't uh, walk through the doors to come to sanctuary service on a Sunday morning. Um, instead, um, I found a young man one time just walking on the outside. And I said, you know, are you okay? And he's like, I need a pastor. Um, and I said, well, I happen to be a pastor. And so I talked to him and he had come to the church because he had just gotten out of rehab and he didn't know where to go. But he knew that his parents used to go to a church in this area and he knew where it was. And so he found his way here. So he found his way to church through a different door. I find hope in uh, people willing to come together despite disagreements, despite not agreeing on every single belief, but willing to come together under a common cause of serving God, of loving God, and realizing that we can love each other and we can get along. Um, and we're actually all here for the same ultimate purpose. Um, we all have that same drive to love God and love the world. My hope for the United Methodist Church is that we continue to move forward. Uh, I have a, a lot of joy coming out of the recent uh, general conference for a variety of different reasons, but for the most part, it's because we're taking steps forward. And I think for a long time as a church, we felt stuck. We felt stuck with where we've been. We felt stuck feeling hopeless. We felt stuck thinking that nothing's ever going to change. And we're not a church that does well being stuck because we're a church that is a church of action. Uh, the United Methodist Church has always been a church that is active in the world, active in communities, and active in social change. And so the fact that we are now moving forward again, that we are now uh, embracing people once more, that we have a book of discipline that doesn't specifically oppress or marginalize a group of people, I find so much hope in that. And I find this uh, great joy in the fact that in the midst of this season, we are going back to our roots while we're moving forward. My hopes for the United Methodist Church are that we continue our mission of building disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world, but being willing to do that in creative and never before done ways, or just capitalizing on where people are in the world. How can we engage with, um, with the world, with our mission and not being uh, bogged down by the model that we do it. Maybe it's not Sunday mornings. Maybe uh, in certain contexts, it's not that Sunday morning worship or Wednesday night Bible studies, but being willing to say, hey, our mission is uh, more important than the model that we go for it. And um, I'd be really excited to see the United Methodist Church lead the way in engaging people in the world, building disciples of Jesus Christ, no matter what that could, what model or means that that looks like, but they would be willing to make the disciples of Jesus Christ above all else. I also brought this Bible with me. Uh, in uh, 2020, when COVID hit and everything shut down, the staff at Grace Avenue started doing these uh, weekly Bible studies where somebody would volunteer and you'd film yourself at home and you'd read the scriptures. And as I was searching through the shelves um, on my day, I realized all my Bibles were at the church um, and we weren't supposed to come up to the church and I'm a rule follower, so I wasn't gonna sneak up to my office to grab a Bible. So I was searching all of the shelves and I pulled this one off and I had been um, thinking about restarting my ordination process. 
And as I um, opened this Bible up, I realized it was a Bible that was given to me by friends and family um, when I graduated from high school. And it was just filled with just notes and reminders of my calling um, and of what they uh, saw the future for for me. And I knew that it was uh, a sign and a symbol that it was time. And so uh, this Bible was kind of the catalyst, uh, finding it again of me going, okay, God, I'll, I'll, I'll pick back that call up. I'll stop uh, you know, avoiding it. It's, it's time.